Welcome to Entrepods, the most cutting edge podcast for entrepreneurs and investors. We answer the hottest question today. So now what? We are radically civilized with a focus on durable solutions that make the most positive impacts in your business, financial, personal, and community life. The world right now belongs to entrepreneurs. Today, we'll show you through our expert conversations that matter, the limitless opportunities you have right now to live the life of your dreams. The best version of you and your business starts now. Welcome to Entrepods. Well, hello, Entrepods. Today, we're going back to our real estate investor uh, roots, and we have an incredible guest for you today. He is the founder of Investor PO, Property List Manager, USA Portfolio, portfolio Real Estate, and he's the visionary that's behind realestateinvestor.com. So this is somebody you, we definitely want to talk to right now. He's been an, an inventor or an innovate, innovator in the real estate industry for over a decade. And he ha, he creates software, he creates tools and services that enable us real estate investors to just to do things better and faster. And he has a great finger on the pulse on things that are happening right now and ways that we can automate, which is what we kind of need to do. We need to automate the things that are not utilizing us at our highest and best uh, purpose. And uh, so we're going to be talking about that, and what's happening right now. And so I want to welcome to the show, Robert Seifert with realestateinvestor.com. I am so happy to have you here today, Robert. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad that you're here too. So right now with realestateinvestor.com, we are seeing this unprecedented seller's market, right? So I, even in my little neighborhood, I live here in Galveston, everybody knows that. And, you know, it's kind of always been sluggish, you know, it's a, it's a retirement community, we get hit by hurricanes, you know, it's not the hottest market in a house right up the street for me just sold within two hours. And I am getting calls all the time. In fact, this reminds me to turn my phone off <laughs> because for people wanting to buy the house. So tell me about what you're seeing and how you guys over there are helping people and uh, any, any tips for our REI audience. Yeah, I mean, it is it is definitely a seller's market. Um, the market's hot everywhere, right? We see that across all of our clients across the U.S. I live here in Tampa, and oh. my real estate business that buys and sells here, we're just seeing crazy things happen, right? Like getting getting more than asking, bid, bidding out people on buying houses that we turn for flips. I mean, it's insane. Some of the numbers we're still shocked at. Like, well, that was that was twenty thousand above our conservative high-end maximum number. Uh, so, that's wow, that's nuts. surprising. It and is. let me ask you, I was talking to someone and they said a lot of them are foreign investors since America is the is the uh, tax haven for the rest of the world. And like, we have to go to Belize or Cook Islands or whatever. So are you seeing that as well there in Tampa? Yeah, especially in Tampa. So we have a, we have obviously, we have a ton and a lot of people have seen a lot of movement and in, in just people moving to the Tampa area and it expanded big time over the last few months. And a lot of it is foreign. We have a lot of Canadians coming down here oh, yeah. um, primarily. And, and a lot of that is you got guys coming from Canada and different parts of the country moving here, making offers sight on scene over the phone without ever even being at the property. And they're, so they're beating out homeowners who are looking to buy at a friend who just went to go buy a house and they were trying to make an offer on the house and they were above asking, but while they were trying to negotiate one little detail, someone already swooped and said, no appraisal, no contingency cash. I'll close now and took the house from them. Um, oh, those Canadians, um, right? Like from South Park. Oh, the Canadians, <laughs> right? Oh, you Canadians. But I feel sorry for our Canadians right now. I mean, they are going through it with their government. I mean, it's insane. I, I you know, I have TikTok right? The TikTok. I like to say it like I'm really old. I have the TikTok and I'm like these lockdowns and the way they're treating people. And like they a tasered a teenager completely alone in a, a skate park. And the police like just came up to him and threw him down and tasered him. And there was no one around. Someone had literally called across the street. He was just literally by himself outside because I guess they're not supposed to be try to be healthy at all. <laughs> I don't wow. even know. I, it was, I was just like, wow. And you, and you just want to ask the police, that's what you signed up for really? You know, like, and yeah. I am a big, you know, I, I want to back our blue. Right. But that is kind of like, Ooh, you're making it kind of hard. 
that's a little extreme um, yeah like like a little unnecessary force yeah a little bit unnecessary it was just, it was a necessary a just a tiny bit well that's crazy so how can so right now data is king because if you have the data then you can have a little bit of a leg up if you're still trying to get in the mix of real estate investing so let's talk about that what are some of the the key like the 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 kpis that real estate investors need to be looking for some things that they need to do to get a leg up so that they can keep their business afloat when things are so nuts right now? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, one, one of the main things, right, when you say data is king is starting with the right data, going right. after the right houses. Um, if you're an investor, you're not looking to buy on the high end of the market, of course, no. right? There's pretty simple buy low, sell high. Um, so how do you do that? And how do you get properties? We're, we're getting them every day and it all comes down to better data. And better data, data, meaning, first of all, think about who is your customer, right? The best thing, the thing that most people skip when they think of any business is they go think about a product. Well, okay, we buy and sell houses. Yeah, that's great. But what's an ideal house or what's an ideal scenario? What does that person's lifestyle look like? And then how do you get that data? So simple things like, you know, death, divorce, there's the Ds, they call it the death Anyone going through a death, that would be a trust transfer, probates. You have divorces. That's a lifestyle situation that may induce someone to sell at a lower price and just need to move fast and not wait for the market or fix up their house or do anything like that. Then you have things like right now, landlords that may not want to be landlords or a distressed situation, which could be your tax defaults or your foreclosures that have a looming date. Right. So if you can take those data points and what we call list stacking, so you stack those data points together. Now you have even better people or properties to go afterwards, right? So that's, the, that's step one, getting the right data, compiling it all together the best you can. So you're going after a smaller list of people, but highly targeted that fit a scenario that are most likely to sell to you at a lower price, even in an economy and market like this. Yeah, I, I know someone who is specifically doing advertising and targeting people who are on forbearance plans. Robert has kids. <laughs> I, okay. I got the, I get the dogs and they're like, I'm always like, don't come in here. Right. And I'm like, yep. busy, but not, when it rains, there's nothing to do anyway. But so what they do is they're targeting people who are under forbearance. A lot of people, especially people who are unfortunately with Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is being very aggressive with their forbearance plan and then wanting to put in uh, the mortgage forbearance. But the way they're doing it is they tell you when you sign up and now they're getting in trouble for it. So there, there are people lawyering up against them. I mean, Wells Fargo has already been in so much trouble. We all know about all, all of the problems that have happened and why they continue to do these things is, is, is beyond me, but it must, it's a big money maker, right? So they say, well, you can just tack your payments on to the end of the loan. Well, most people will do that. Well, then you go to do that. And if you've been out of work or if your credit is still not stellar, which I don't know many people who have managed to keep incredible credit, especially if they're working nine to five jobs in their industries in hospitality or travel or, you know, these industries that we have seen major impacts, then they go, well, nope, that's not for you. And and there's nothing you can do about it. So then you have to sign a forbearance and then they can jack up your prices. They'll tell you, we want to try to keep you in your home, but they're going to do it. It's such an extreme thing. So I know someone who's only reaching out to Wells Fargo people saying, let me take over this mortgage of what you owe. And we'll just add on like less than what for uh, what Wells Fargo was. And we're just going to keep you in your house because I don't want to have to sell it. I just want to make a tiny bit. Yep. And they're making a fortune helping people out of these of these houses right now. So there's a big market. So, you know, if you're listening to this and you're like, well, man, I don't want to come in to distress buyer. Am I hurting people? No, it's called ethical entrepreneurship. There are ways to be ethical real estate investors and ethical entrepreneurs and to go in there and really help people out against big banking and predatory banking and really to be able to help them. So uh, those are some things to look at, but you need the data. So well, that's a good point too. That's, that's another data point, right? I'm right. aware of that specific thing, um, but that's just, it's another data point. You now mm -hmm. know something else that you could target. And when I say target, it is exactly what you just said. It's who can you help? Who is best suited in a position that needs the most help? Wherever you can solve a big problem, the bigger problem you solve, is always going to pay you well without even thinking about worrying about the money. Solve a bigger problem. You're helping more people. You'll always make more money. 
Right. Always in the end. And you shouldn't worry because we're, we're coming back. We're going to have to come out of this. We can't just have, you know, the majority of the country out of work, unable to pay their basic bills. Right. So we will come out of it. So there's, there's a lot of opportunities for people to get into real estate investing. You know, it isn't like uh, Bitcoin where you're like, oh, I should have held on to that back in, you know, when it first came out or whatever. That's crazy. That's crazy. But now people are even backing away from that. Did you see that Elon uh, just tweeted that he wants to stop taking Bitcoin for Tesla. Oh, I did not see that. Yes, he did. He just came out. That. Yeah, this morning he just said that. So it, because he's Ooh. pushing to, to to accept Dogecoin instead. So I'm glad I got into Do Dogecoin, although it's went down since he went on SNL. I don't know if it was the Wario sketch or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that did it. So when you, um, you all always come out and you do speaking for real estate gigs and different things like that, when real real estate investors or even entrepreneurs come in, come and listen, listen to you, what are the top concerns they have right now that you're able to walk them through or give them some tips on? Yeah. I mean, number one, the number one thing we've always had now, you, you know, as well as always has been follow-up, right. And, and, and why I say that is because uh, most people that don't succeed in real estate is because they don't follow up. Most entrepreneurs in real estate, as they start to get in the business and they start to get in the, caught in what I call the ups and downs, right? Where they're up and down and up and down have inconsistency. Generally speaking, they're spending money and they can't figure out why they're not scaling. It's follow up, right? So follow up t tends to be the big root underneath all of it that they lack it or don't do it well. And there's a way to automate it. That's one. And then really the big one, especially now, um, and I'm actually going next week to go talk about this exact topic somewhere to a, to a room full of agents, brokers, and investors mm -hmm. is mindset. It's the most over, under, overlooked thing, yet it's the common denominator in everything. So if you're in a fear-based mindset right now and you're worried that the world's coming to an end, well, that's going to paralyze you in anything that you do in any business, your regular life, right? So you, you can choose to do that, or you can choose to have a different mindset about things, the different way that you receive things. You can't change or control the circumstances or the things that are occurring, but you absolutely have the ability to control what happens between your two years and what you think and how you believe and what your thoughts are related to that. And so I think that's the the bigger one that people have as an underlying issue that they don't even recognize or they might, but most don't even see it until it's brought to their attention. And they're like, wow, that actually would solve a lot of my problems. Yeah, it generally does. Yeah, no, I talk to entrepreneurs and I coach them through that too. And it's amazing that the sort of woo woo, you know, like this is just out there stuff. Oh, we're going to burn some. Do I need crystals now? You know, like they get yeah. kind of negative, right? Yep. And, and so then you have to just work on regular things, you know, because if it's like that, that book that I love, Who Moved My Cheese? What would you do if you're not afraid? Well, we'd make a lot different choices and some would be good and some would be bad, but we would have seen much bigger strides as well. If I wasn't afraid, I would ask that girl out instead of, you know, or I would have done that deal or if I, you know, and sometimes fear is good. So there is fear if you are reading the data and you're like, uh, if you make a decision, I'm gonna take the leap in real estate investing, right? Okay, great. But then get the data, get the education, and then still move move forward. People yes. let fear or negative thinking, like it's not the right time. I have no money. I can't do anything right now. Stop them from even trying. And that's what you know we all need to work on. So, what are some tips do you have for people who may who come to you? They're struggling, and their limiting beliefs are like knocking against that mindset, even the thought of it. You know, do you have anything that you work with them on or any good questions that you ask them to get them to break through that? I do. So um, the first one, I just I just put all this in my book, too, that I just finished. It's mm -hmm. that the first one is being aware. Right. Mo most people aren't even aware that they have a limiting belief or that anything is even holding them back. So the first thing is taking in what you just heard. And, and instead of making the judgment of, well, that's woo foo, changing my thoughts isn't going to change anything. Well, here, Henry Ford said it best. Well, if that's what you believe, then that's true, right? I mean, I'm paraphrasing a statement, but that, that's it. Like whatever you think is true or you think is your reality, it is. And until you change that, you won't change anything. So first and foremost, it's just being aware that you even have a thought that is limiting. Then once you get aware that, wow, why do I think that, right? Then you have to start asking yourself questions. 
And questions help you uh, ponder or go deeper, right? And so what I mean by that, using something you just said as an example, you just said, and it's common, right? The, I don't have enough money, this isn't the right time, this blah, 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 blah. That's all, be aware that you're saying all those negative things. Now ask yourself a question. Well, if that was true, then why is it that so many people are getting started in real estate and making money? Why is it that there are so many people still successful in real estate? Why is it that there are people making money in real estate with no money? Why? Right? As you start to ask those why questions, you'll open your mind to the possibility that something else exists. Once another possibility introduces itself to you, then you have the ability to make a new decision. Now, there's a lot more work to go into that, right? Well, because yeah, because I had this conversation with someone and they said, well, because they grew up rich and they had a leg up. If you're not one of the elites, you'll never get ahead. They had help or they just got lucky. Some people are just lucky. And I was like, you can't help, you know, like I stopped. I have to admit that was a hard one. I'm having to work on that myself to go, is there anything I can do to change this? Or is this so embedded? They're like, you know, the elves in that Narnia story, you know, there is Aslan braying at them and they're huddled around and they're still in the dark. They failed to see God's light and glory. And, uh, and so it's like, you know, do I try to move forward or <laughs> what do you do with that? Cause you know, have you ever encountered that? Now I'm going to ask you for like help since you're like, you know, so have you ever encountered that? And what was your, what was your response to that? Or do you just blow them off? <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't blow them off, but I. But to your point, there is there is a point of no point, right? right. There's, there's a point where you recognize that your programming is so tough against you, and it, that the reality. There's a great statement, right? The the when the student is ready, the teacher will will appear. It may be an opportunity that that person said those things to you, and yes, you can easily recognize there's not much that I can say that's going to break through that. The most that I can do as a person, if I do anything, is acknowledge that's a very interesting observation, right? And I'm almost agreeing with them because the, the person like that, if I try to tell them something, the reality is they're not going to listen to anything that I say because they expect that. They actually set all that with the expectation that you're gonna defend why they're wrong. And now we're in a battle and they're not open to listen to anything anyways. So first and foremost, I have to agree with them in some shape, form or fashion so that they're mm -hmm their defensive part of their brain shuts down and possibly opens. And so that's a, that's an interesting observation. I, I could see how some people might think or believe that based on where they come from. So I'm almost agreeing with him without agreeing with him, mm -hmm. right? Just so his defenses start to go down a little bit, because it's the only way I'm going to get past that wall. And the only other thing that I would say to someone like that is a question. I would, I would ask, well, Hey, you know what? And for me, I can use an example personally, because mm -hmm. I, I wasn't rich or wealthy or elite when I started out. I was actually uh, three months late on our mortgage, uh, about to get repossessed on our cars, facing eviction court in a couple of days. And I quit my job and went all into real estate. I had $300 to my name and I somehow became a success. So my question to that person would be, I'd actually tell them that story because stories generally connect with people. If you can find one, if you can't, it makes it a little bit harder. But if you have any story of yourself or someone else that you know that defeated the odds they just gave you, mm -hmm. which I would use, and then ask a simple question, how do you think that was possible? Or are we just calling that pure luck? And then whatever their answer is, really my, because most likely if they're still being very defensive, well, that's the pure luck I'm talking about. Hey, I totally can understand why you might think that. And um, is it possible that until you change that thought, nothing in your life is going to change? I just want to, I want to leave them with a question to ponder because here's what I recognize while me asking a challenging question in the moment, they're going to defend against it. They're going to fight it. They really have nothing to do. They may ponder that beyond that conversation. And all I did was plant a seed that may open their mind at some point when the next person that might be the right teacher for them or the person they need to re meet or the conversation they need to have now their brain, something clicked, right? I've, I've seen it happen to myself multiple times where I've heard something later and said, you know, I heard that before and now it totally clicks and makes sense with me and now I'm gonna change what I think. So that's the most we can do, I think, in moments like that where someone's so, that person's hardwired into that thought pattern. Mm -hmm. All I can do is plant a seed of hope. 
Yeah, I absolutely love that. And you know what? I love the inquisitive nature of that. So for all your real estate investors and, and, and my entrepreneurs that are listening, be more inquisitive with yourself on things and be more open. Even if you feel things inside of you going, no, 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 make note of that. And then later on think, now, is that just a limiting belief or is that a universal truth that I know to be true for me in my situation? right? So we're always having to grow and evaluate for that. But I think too, I want to go back to realestateinvestor.com. Again, we're guys, we're talking to Robert Seifert with realestateinvestor.com. They have tools and solutions and data um, and software and training for real estate investors. But I think the inquisitive nature is probably why you're doing so well as an innovator. You seem like someone who's constantly asking questions when people come to you to problems. Do you, would you agree with that? Uh, innovation happens to be one of our core values. And yes, that comes from the curiosity brain, right? Like I love, and I've heard it said many, many times to be, be curious like a child. When we were born, we were curious about everything. And as a fortune, I have a little three-year-old. So I watch his <laughs> curiosity and creativity go all over the place. And I use that as an example to say, where could I be more curious? What else is possible? Like I'm, I'm never going to be in realestateinvestor.com will never be satisfied with status quo. That's not our standard. Our mm -hmm. standard is what's next, what's better, what's more efficient. How can this process be improved? Where is this overcomplicated and could be simplified? Um, and we're always asking that question because if we're always asking that question then we're always looking for great ways to grow and learn uh, and being curious just like a child is right and that's when the world opens up to you that's when possibilities it's when you say nothing is possible well you've already shut off the possibility mm -hmm. you're right as henry Ford, said, you're right nothing else is possible then for you if everything is possible to me and everything can always be open to me then i'm always going to find new and innovative ways to keep ahead of everything and to make things better and more efficient for everybody mm. and so we're on, we're on a mission to do that so that's that's why we made that our core value um, and we ask those questions every single day. A and we challenge the status quo. Well, okay, we thought that was right. Is it right? Like if 10 other people are saying that's wrong, maybe we should question whether or not that's right. Maybe there is a better process here that we've not considered. Maybe there is another problem here that we didn't recognize that we've now opened, right? And so I'm, I'm always challenging that. I'm challenging that every day in my own personal life when I wake up, is this the best morning routine I could do? Is this the best way to start my day? And how you can answer that question is the results you're getting. Mm. If you're not happy with the results you're getting, then something you're doing has to change or else you'll never get a different result. Yeah. Inevitable. And, and that, that is so basic for anyone that start, that's in business is the idea of constantly challenging and taking in these, sometimes they're negative, like, ah, these, the, the staff is just complaining. They're always complaining about the same issue. At one point, you've got to look at that issue and, and think, is this a real issue? You know, and if it's not a real issue and you just have a negative Nelly, well, then that's your issue that needs to go and get out of there so that everybody can stay on a more positive, uplifting a trend. So before we go, let's talk about what is your new hotness? What is the thing that you are most passionate about besides that beautiful beautiful little toddler that the cutest laugh that's running around in the background. But what else is your passion right now as far as work and real estate investing and what you're doing right now? Yeah, I mean, our our passion is changing the game for everybody. I mean, it truly is. So and, and how we do that is, again, we, we're we, like our slogan that we're working on right now, a new slogan for real estate investor.com is how can we make how can we make real estate investing accessible to anyone? make it simple and easy for anyone. So, and why we take that approach is we look at myself and my business partner, and we look at the years that it took us to put together the systems, to figure out how to hire the people, how to train. And we watch the same thing happening with people that get started in real estate. They get paralyzed by thinking there's all these things and there is, right? And so that becomes paralyzing, or even as they figure it out and they get a deal done here, or they start to do an investment, it takes them years to get to the level of success that they thought. So we're very passionate about how do we take those years and compress it into days or weeks? And I think we're very good at doing that now. And we're continuing to refine, how do we do that down in the minutes? How do we make it so simple that your grandmother who knows nothing about real estate could literally log into a system and start doing real estate transactions at a click of a button and not have to go anywhere else to figure that out? 
you're gonna have to go figure out any other of the 10 things that it takes to put that together. So our, our mission is literally to be the one place that solves all your real estate needs, whether that's more leads, learning how to close and have conversations that are fruitful for sellers and buyers, learning your taxes and finances, your property management, access to funding to buy houses and to flip them. Like all of that in one roof is our complete mission for the world. And we're also now figuring out and about to launch our marketplace, which will be, how do we do that for free? How, do, how, how can we teach as much of that as possible for as free as possible for as long as possible so we can help and impact the most people? Wow, that sounds like that's absolutely incredible. I am so excited to get you on the show. And I, when my when Tammy, you know, our my our wonderful Tammy, my podcast manager, my co host, when she was like, Oh, we got Robert Seifert and real estate investor.com, I was like, Yes, because we, we need more of this. I'm a big fan of Americans being able to be real estate investors. I think real estate and us owning land and being good stewards of the land that we own is the key to so many things that we want to fix. If we can get more people investing in real estate, not only is that financially benefit, benefiting the real estate investor, but usually they mostly do it local. You get some people that are like, oh, I've got houses all over the country and all that. But usually they do it local and they care about it. They care about the neighborhoods. They care about taking people who are renting, who really want to own a home, have a backyard for their kids and putting those families into houses that would have just rotted and fixing them up so they're no longer leaching lead and poisonous things into the ground. But now there are these little beacons that instead of doing urban sprawl, you know, they they are taking older properties and making them good again and keeping, you know, keeping towns intact and the more people increasing the town space. So it's good for the environment. It's good for families. It's good for the community as a whole. It's good to keep down, you know, carbon emissions and everything else. Cause the more you have a tax space in a smaller area, the more small businesses bring up in that area. And you're no longer buying up farmland, which we desperately need is great farmland to be able to feed people and, and all the other wonderful things that real estate investors impact. So the more that we can get this out to people and there are ways to do this, ways where you can jump in and have more things done, done for you um, to make it easier Then I wish everybody could be a real estate investor. <laughs> I think it would be absolutely incredible. Anyway, guys, we are at the end of our time. I want to thank you so much. We've had Robert Seifert with realestateinvestor.com here on the show. If you want to learn more and you want to get some free education, and learn how you can jump right in and learn the tools and software and ways they can help you, I highly encourage you to do so. The links, as always, will be at the end of the show. Anyway, thank you so much, Robert, for coming here. And do you have anything to say before we, before we go? Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Jennifer. It's been such a pleasure to be on the show. And um, the one thing I would say is whatever you're fearing to do today, do that. That is great. I do absolutely that every love day. It you'll start to live an uncomfortable life, which will lead to better and higher levels of comfort for you and your family. It's scary, but it's worth it, guys. It's it totally worth it. Okay, thanks for joining us on Entrepods. We'll see you next week. Be sure to like, comment, and share. Give us that five-star rating. That helps us get more incredible guests like Robert on the show so that we can share this knowledge with you and get more information out because we're all trying to help each other now. And don't forget, you can become a member of Entrepods. You can ask me questions. You can even ask a question for one of our amazing guests. Just go to Entrepods.com. Thank you so much much and you have a great week and thank you again Robert it's been just an absolute pleasure absolutely thank you thank you for listening and please go give us a five-star rating on your preferred listening platform if you enjoyed the show this helps us reach more listeners like you and keep booking amazing guests if you'd like to join our growing entrepreneurs community want our social media links to like or share or inquire about one-on-one -on -one strategy calls with our host Jennifer please visit entrepods.com See you next time, and here's to you and your best life imaginable.